I had to look it up. I was like, how did this movie get that MCU money without being a part of the MCU, without being a part of a cinematic universe? It didn't. So the creators directed by Gareth Edwards, who directed Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, also directed that Godzilla movie that came out 2014, I believe. So the plot of the creator is AI had been established and we used robots for, you know, labor and such. I feel like you know where this is going. <laughs> LA gets nuked by AI and now America is at war with AI. Uh, New Asia, the territory called New Asia is not. They embrace AI. Don't know much about how the rest of the world deals with AI, but those two countries deal with it with war, not war. The AI has this new end game weapon. So John David Washington and a bunch of soldiers go in to find this weapon, neutralize the weapon. The weapon turns out to be this little kid, little AI robot kid, but little kid nonetheless. After that, it's pretty much the last of us with AI. I guess, I mean, there's actually a few different movies you see in here, inspiration from here and there. However, I constantly operate on the belief that any movie out there can be described by saying this movie and that movie went splat. Some movies blatantly rip off other films, some have homage, and some use familiar plot points, but execute it in a way that feels new. I feel like that's what this movie does. I mean, if I'm gonna call it Last of Us with AI, I mean, Logan was the last of us also, so there's that. John David Washington, I would say, leads the film. <laughs> there's a difference between leads the film and steals the show. I'll get to her in a second. John David Washington's leading the film and the man's solid. Solid soldier type would have been fine and he's fine in that role, but you need someone who's also progressively more human as he starts questioning humanity itself. But I thought the emotional scenes were where he shined best. This movie has a great support cast too. Gemma Chan, Ken Watanabe, Allison Janney as the villain, gotta say, she is incredible at playing a complete and total dick. She's kind of the illustration of people in this world and how they see the war they're fighting. You know, it's said often in this film, like, no, 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 we're not killing the robots. We're just turning them off. We're flipping a switch. I just found it interesting that most villains, when they kill people, they know they're killing people. They, they know they're being a dick in that moment. They may say the ends justify the means. But to her particular character, she's just turning off the computer doesn't mean anything to her. You can make an argument. She doesn't even have that ends justify the means kind of mentality. She's just like, why would I have that? I'm just turning off machinery. Turn off your phone. You're a dick too, right? Doesn't really add up. Why am I a dick? These are some of the themes that are in this film. Doesn't always hammer home all of its themes, but the themes are here and I can appreciate that. But the little AI girl in this film named Alfie is played by an actress named Madeline Univoyles. And I was like, what else has she been in? I got it. Nothing. This is her movie. This is the first time she's ever been on screen. What can I say? Sometimes you have what is called a gift. And she apparently has that. You know how little kid acting can be in movies sometimes? I thought she was great. She's the heart of the film. Now there is something about the vibe of this film. Maybe it's because it's an original story, but it kind of, there was something James Cameron about it. I mean that as a compliment, because I, I love James Cameron. I think he's incredible. For nothing else, I can go into any one of his movies and know that I'm going to be thoroughly entertained. But there was something about this movie that reminded me of mid to late 80s James Cameron. Like if 80s James Cameron was given the budget and technology of 2023, what would that film look like? it would probably look something like this. And that comes down to world building. I always thought Cameron was great at world building. So is Gareth Edwards. It's a world that feels lived in, also plays to its strengths. It could have fallen into the cliches of the stories we've seen a hundred times over, as it sounded like it was going to when I was describing this movie at the beginning of this video, but it never does. It's a personal story about these two people traversing this world that's at war. A world that is asking questions about what is intelligence? What is artificial intelligence? How is that different than us? Again, it doesn't always hit that point home. And it did kind of frustrate me a bit. But this movie was undeniably at its most interesting when it was dabbling into those themes. Also going to illustrate again, the budget of this film, I looked it up. It's a round, quick Google search tells me $80 million. I have seen movies with astronomically larger budgets be dwarfed by the visuals in this film. The best CGI is a CGI you don't notice. There are a lot of films out there that use CGI, but you know, largely for backdrop purposes, you don't tend to notice that. When you can have me watching a futuristic film with war segments, dealing with tech that we don't even have, 
And I still, it doesn't look like CGI to me. Just, it feels like I'm in the future. That's a win. I will say there were a couple of moments of dialogue in here where you can read the lips and the lips did not say what the person said. That was an F-bomb that I did not hear. The film is PG-13. I feel like there might be a rated R cut, a director's cut of the film that might make it to home release, I don't know. As well as a three hour cut at least. There were some themes that were cut short, some scenes that I felt like it was sped through in parts. It's one of those rare movies where I could have gone for the movie being a little longer. <laughs> I'm just saying. Editing wise, it does have a bit of that jumping back and forth that Christopher Nolan loves. Now everyone's like, I, I guess we'll all do that. Look, in the end, the creator, it was solid. It was memorable. The acting was great. The world feels full. It feels alive. The action sequences, they're exciting. They have tension. But in the end, it's an emotional film. Did it stick the landing of that? Absolutely. Maybe you're a fan of sci-fi or maybe you just want to see a gold standard of how to use an $80 million budget in film. In any case, the creator's worth watching and worth buying on Blu-ray. All right, so the creator, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.